thank you to be here. I'm very happy to be here to help uh, my friends from other lives uh, to start this new adventure, this new treatment. Um, it's really difficult to find new things now in the Congress. Don't you think so? Everything is published, everything is known before the Congress. It's always nice to see friends, etc. But new things, new tools, new ideas are really difficult to find new things. And if I accept it to be here now, even if there is no evidence-based medicine, is you are going to see that it's going, something starting, it's because I really think that it's something new, with a new philosophy, a new way to work, a new technology, and probably, remember that I say probably, uh, probably interesting, uh, probably efficient, and we are lucky to have uh, three talkers who are going to explain us how to use it, the first experience, first Florence Danet uh, from the company is going to explain how it works, very important, and uh, it's a very important talk because we are going to understand that it's really different. And of course, in your minds, we are going to think, hey, it could be useful for that, that, that. So uh, think about that. Secondly, we are going to have a talk from uh, Hugo Chez, uh, who is a physiotherapist in France who uh, start to use it now for how, uh, one year, two years, and uh, a big experience in uh, patients uh, with CF, but also with COPD patients, that is what's going to be interesting to talk about, his experience. So if we're going to, he's going to show that something works, and if something works, it means there is something, something to prove. And then Thomas Ilman, uh, uh, who, uh, how, how many, two years using it, one year, two years, is going Six to... Uh, Six months. Six months, only six months. <laughs> the first experience with six months, and uh, I saw the talk, and you are going to see that it's only awful what you do with your passions <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the movie. Uh, okay, don't worry. If perhaps it's better to eat after the movie than before. If you have already eaten, sorry for that. Uh, okay, let's go, Florence. It's to you. Show us what is new in this Simeox, please. Thank you, Jésus. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for joining this uh, practical workshop. So first, I would like to thank uh, Professor Gonzalez for uh, having accepted to chair our workshop, as well as Hugues Gaucher and Thomas Silman for joining us uh, and sharing their clinical experience with Simeox. So I'm glad to uh, walk you through a short introduction on our technology. So deep snare, fatigue, bronchial instability, sticky mucus and viscous mucus uh, favoring infection, demanding bronchial drainage. As you are all well aware, those are pain points and difficulties that significantly impact the quality of life of patients with pulmonary disease and that are still today quite difficult to effectively address. So in this context, the PhysioAssist, so it's a French company founded in 2012, has developed the Simeox with the goal to help those patients suffering from chronic pulmonary disease such as cystic fibrosis, COPD, or bronchiectasis, relieving those pain points. Simeox is a unique technology which liquefies the bronchial mucus while ensuring its transport from the distal part of the lungs to the central airways. A better clearance for a better breathing. CIMEOX is the result of five years of research in partnership with prestigious research centers and hospitals. This research program has consisted into three main steps. The first step, step sorry, looked into the physical behavior and properties of the mucus. Bronchial mucus has a tixotropic property, which means that when it is stimulated with a very specific signal, it can liquefy like water in less than two seconds. But when the stimulation stops, it goes back to its initial shape. The second step has been around the definition of this specific signal in terms of shape of the signal, intensity, frequency, etc. Finally, the third step has been the validation of 
uh, this signal using a long numerical model that allowed us to determine the power that, one ne that was needed in order to have the signal being disseminated until the very last generation of the bronchial tree. So CMEOX in practice, you can see here uh, a picture of a patient using the CMEOX. So you have the device here, you have a filter at the outlet of the device, a tube, and a mouthpiece. During, uh, so CMEOX is a device for patients who can inspire, who have the ability to take breath, a breath in, and who can cough, okay? CMEOX, during inspiration, there's no specific action from the CMEOX. During inspiration, as you can see here, the patient, the, the patient inspire, excuse me, uh, the patient slowly inspires through his nose to bring air, as you can see here on this uh, drawing, behind the mucus. The CMEOX signal will take place during the whole expiration, the entire expiration. During the expiration, the patient triggers the CMEOX signal. Small constant volumes of air are captured at a frequency of 12 Hertz, which generates, as you can see here on this graph, a succession of increasing short point of depressions, creating a shock wave within the lung tree that is destructuring the mucus. As the volume decreases along the expiration, the mucus is moved from the distal part of the central, uh, distal part of the lungs to the central airways, ready to be naturally expectorated. In between each depression, as you can see here, the patient is reconnected to atmospheric pressure. The patient is actually connected to atmospheric pressure during 70% of the expiration time. And this is obviously done on purpose in order to avoid the bronchial collapses, which is a major problem for treating those uh, pulmonary disease patients. The expiration, the use of the device is done in total relaxation so the patient fatigability is not increased. So here are a summary of the benefits of, uh, of the CMEOX. So really two words to remember, efficient and comfortable. We can go much further in the lungs to allow more distal mobilization of the secretion compared to what can be done with current available techniques. No collapses of the bronchi and no increase of the patient fatigue. And in addition, I'd like also to mention that we've been reported a few cases that uh, let us think that CMEOX can have a role on the decrease of hyperinflation. Thank you for your attention. I will now give the floor to um, Mr. Gauchet. Dear colleagues, um, what about uh, state of art regarding airway occurrence technique in COPD? Um, COPD uh, patients with acute pulmonary exacerbations, uh, state of art is uh, increase of sputum volume, reduction of hospitalization duration, and facilitation of uh, an IV uh, winning wave. Um, as regard to stable COPD patients, uh, improvements of symptoms, dyspnea, quality of life, exercise tolerance, and uh, so reduction of hospitalization rate. Regarding effects of uh, uh, airway craze techniques on exacerbation rate in COPD, in uh, COPD patients with uh, acute exacerbation, uh, after 30 minutes of uh, intrapulmonary percussive ventilation, we decrease uh, respiratory rate, increase PaO2, uh, reduce PaCO2, decrease hospitalization duration, and prevent the worsening of patients' prognosis by reducing the recurrence of COPD exacerbation. Um, regarding 
patients, stable patients, COPD with uh, a treatment by uh, TPEP, uh, soft PEP, uh, uh, decrease the three months exacerbation rate, reduce uh, residual volume, improve quality of life, improve dyspnea, and increase exercise tolerance. My experience show me that uh, there is no efficient respiratory physiotherapy without mucus preparation and action directly on the mucus to make it mobilized. The best is uh, to be able to do it without any stress, without resistant increase, and without fatigue for patients. For that, what we have to adapt a, a good and personalized strategy for each patient with basis. Basis is nose wash, learning of the taking of the inhaled therapy, chest trap if necessary for correction of respiratory pump, and learning of inspiratory break with volumetric spirometer as Voldine. Simex session performed with autogenic drainage. First, we have um, to uh, prepare the pump. And uh, to prepare the uh, respiratory pump, we have to stretch and uh, in secondary inspirers, work at opening of shoulders, global muscular strengthening, and learning of the ventilatory control to stress. And um, um, session of relaxation, hypnosis, yoga, to dissociate this near briefness. Now we are able to manage really a good session of physiotherapy to be efficient and to use CMEOX at each session as we do. We would like to present some preliminary CMEOX data in COPD, in stable impersecuting COPD with bronchiectasis, and uh, actually a study validation of the technology in CF. The name is Mucosin trial. Um, for use CMEOX in COPD with acute exacerbation. Um, the study of the Dr. Minaltal shows that for 10 patients COPD hospitalized for acute exacerbations, treat under optimal drug therapy during five days with CMEOX or manual chest physiotherapy, two sessions, 20 minutes per day. Uh, we obtain improvement of mucus clearance and symptoms in both groups. FEV1 improved only in CMOS groups by um, FEV1 more than five persons. And FEV1 on uh, FVC increased from uh, 53 persons to 58 persons in CMOS group. CRT score improved in CMOS group only from 20 to uh, 17. With my colleague uh, Mathilde Profi from Nice, um, we have um, uh, a small series of patients uh, in stable hypersecreting COPD with bronchiectasis. Stable chronic COPD referred to physiotherapist office after private pulmonary consultation for deep snare worsening. And uh, we have very, very interesting uh, signs uh, who motivate us to uh, use uh, CMOX with patient COPD, but it's really uh, um, to confirm. And um, results uh, increase FEV1, more than 50 persons, and um, reduce uh, residual volumes, less than 68 persons, chest expansion, thoracic uh, evaluation mobility, uh, more than two or uh, three persons, bulk scale to TDM is, uh, six distance uh, uh, increase and uh, under uh, PO2 uh, so. Uh, what we feel and what f the patients uh, realize is uh, uh, hyperinflation would, would decrease and uh, increase sputum volume at distance from the station. Finally, in conclusion, the use of CMOX technology during chest physiotherapy could contribute to the therapeutic optimization of the global care of COPD patients. The benefits concern the fluidification and the mobilization of the mucus in secreting patients with a significant impact on lung function, lung obstruction. 
The sessions are tolerated well by the patient with a strong therapeutic adherence. The physiotherapists keep an essential, essential role in this use. In non-secreting patients, we also note an improvement of lung volumes, suggesting a direct possible effect on the hyperinflation, immediate improvement of tolerance in the effort. The next step is validation of simulogy, uh, Simiox technologies sorry, uh, uh, with CF patients. Thank you for your attention. So, um, my name is Thomas Hillmann. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm a little bit nervous because it's my first speak in English, so um, if I have, make some mistakes, um, keep smiling, please. So, I don't know um, if it is a German thing, but um, we have nine minutes to go, and um, I have to present my conflicts of interest, but I don't think it's very interesting, and um, I think one of the most important things um, for uh, therapy um, is a good working team. So um, I want to present us. That's us. Um, uh, a team of um, a CF team is a, is a team of uh, many people. And um, you see the doctors and the nurses. That's my um, physio team. We are 11 physiotherapists with uh, five CF specialists. And um, that's me. So um, where I'm coming from, um, I'm working at the University uh, of Essen. We are a daughter of it. Um, it's called the Roland Clinic. And uh, Essen, I don't know if anybody knows it, it's near to uh, Dusseldorf. Or for football fans, it's near to Borussia Dortmund. Um, I think it's much important. And. Um, we are a CF center with approximately uh, 300 um, adult patients. Um, we tested the Simiox on 30 CF patients, and um, two of them are Jens and Caroline, and we want to have a look on them. So let's have a look on Jens and Caroline. We started with Jens. So Jens came to us with an acute infection with uh, FE, FE of B1 degrees, uh, with chest tightness and very tough bronchial mucus. Um, you will see it in the video. We heard about it. And uh, when he came to us, um, there are the typical um, therapists. And so we have a look uh, on the LUFU, lung function. Um, and please. Keep in mind the um, FEV1 here and um, the residual volume. So please think about it, and um, we see it later again. And we have a look here, and I think uh, you can see the problem with the mucus here. Um, so we started our therapy. Um, our physio days in hospital with Jens, uh, starting with inhalation. Then we have a physio session uh, combined with a Simiox. And uh, at the afternoon, uh, again, an inhalation. Um, and then Simiox sometimes with a physio, at the end without a physio. And some activities. We don't call it sport. It's now it's uh, all about activities. And at the evening, he did again an inhalation and a Simiox session for his own. So, in most day, days, we only have uh, time for one physio session with, with Jens. Sometimes we can help him with a second uh, physio session, but most uh, we only have time for one session a day. And um, so let's have a look. I don't know if it is needful to, to, to look the whole video, it uh, goes three minutes, but um, very important is not to look at my body language. It's not uh, good for a physiotherapist, I think. <laughs> so what I'm doing, um, I'm just uh, helping him, him to relax and um, helping him with his breathing techniques. Um, so 
we will do it in the um, in the hands-on session later. And we can di discuss about his uh, cuffing technique at the end because it's not the typical way we, we physiotherapists want want him to cuff, but um, that's his way to get it out. We teach this in it, but uh, he every time we're, makes the same mistakes and it's his way to do it. So we we'll go to the end. And that's it. So um, Jens really has problems to get his mucus out uh, without help. So um, you see, I didn't help him a lot. And um, the Simiox helped him when I'm not there. And when we have a look after, yeah, it's after two months, he stayed in hospital for two months. Um, Think about the residual volume, it's getting better, and uh, the FEV1 increased. So uh, he can go home, and um, he wants to go home with the Simiox because he said it helped him a lot. And then we want to have a look on uh, Caroline. Caroline uh, comes to us with the FEV1 degrees, massive mucus impactions, and a growing atelectasis. I think it's very impressive to see it here, and um, we solved the problem with a bronchoscopy, but uh, that's not the way we want to do it every week, so we have uh, to think about other opinion, and um, so she stayed for three days in hospital, mm, it's the same program like Jens, um, but what happened after the three days, because she comes to us uh, every months because the mucus plugs are already there and then she started uh, coming to us once a week or sometimes she comes uh, two times a week and have a physio sim uh, sessions with us so um, what's our Caroline thoughts she uh, thought I need a simiox at home it helps me to solve my mucus problems uh, I have only one physio session a week. It helps me when it isn't there. I can use uh, the Simiox between cooking, eat my eat, and uh, my daughter's nap. So, what are my conclusions? Um, all patients accepted working with the Simiox. Um, we get better results on airway clearance. A simplified way to avoid mucus, and my team and. Me like to work with the device. Um, there are cons too. Um, I think the patients ha must know no breathing techniques, and um, it's it's uh, required for them that they need uh, that they know them because that's I thinking that's one of the things why CF patients are better than COPD patients with the Simiox device. Um, the physios need time to teach it and uh, I think it's exp an expensive way to uh, avoid the mucus. Oof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I have a microphone. Yes. Thank you very much for these very beautiful talks. Uh, very clear. And yes, we, we, we want to try now. Uh, of course, as uh, already told, um, now we are waiting for studies evidence-based medicine, but it's surprising to see that uh, with physiotherapists, all the physiotherapists who test it uh, have a positive opinion about it. So again, I repeat, there must be something. Uh, let's uh, start to work, to help, uh, to understand. Very important, it's before to leave, it's to test 
the device on you to understand that it's completely different. So you have four tables, yes, four, four tables to test it. And if you have any question, we have perhaps time for one or perhaps two questions. If not, you will be able to ask the questions uh, in front of your colleagues or physiotherapists or testing it. Any question? Yes. Um, yeah, thank you for this presentation. Just a question about the technical aspect. What is the range of negative pressure that are applied during the expiration phase? So the, the, the depression, the value of depression is really uh, depending on the, uh, uh, the, the, the long volume of the patient, on the amount of volume that is in front of the device. So it, it's very difficult to understand. So it's not, to, a, pressure, um, it's not a pressure that is set. It's not a pressure set. It's a flow. That's it, and it depends on the... It's, it's, the depression is really the result of the fact that the machine is, will capture volume of air. And the more... The, the more air which is captured, the greater the depression that is being generated. And the way the depression is being generated is very specific and will disseminate, vibrate throughout the, the lung to uh, reduce the viscosity of the mucus. And as we are taking air, the column of air is moving from the distal port to the upper port to move as we are liquefying. Have you, have you done any measure and do you know, well, is it around... 10 centimeters of water, 30, 40? The, the capability of the device is, is pretty high because, as you know, the re there's a lot of resistance uh, induced by the, by the lung. Uh, so we, we, we have some, some measures, but again, it, it, it doesn't mean much. Yeah, yes, of course, but what is it? it's not a cough assist. It's not an uh, inexcifrator with plus there's or no, minus There's no 40. flow. The, the machine does not um, um, uh, create any flow any continuous flow. A continuous flow will have an effect to, to collapse the bronchi, and this is not what we want to do. So by doing those points of depression, we avoid the, the bronchial collapses. Those depressions are for about 20, 25 milliseconds, so it's super short uh, depression, again, to avoid the uh, bronchial collapses. Well, she doesn't want to say how much is it, but you're going to try it. It's not like a cough assist. It's really a very soft pressures, and probably that is a key point of uh, this technique. So we have four tables. You should have been given a little paper with a number. And uh, uh, the second question, oh, Florence. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, with the cough assist, um, uh, there's a known problem that the um, bronchi will um, collapse, even, uh, especially in bronchiectasis disease. Yes. Uh, but for example, with an IPPB uh, device, um, um, you can prevent um, uh, collapse of the bronchi, um, and uh, that helps in, in physiotherapy as well. Have you uh, done a comparison between IPPB devices in patients and usage of the Simiox? So the, so the indication is, uh, is, uh, is different. Uh, we do not uh, apply any positive pressure because I, I believe IPPB, this is what it does for a thoracic mobilization, right? More than for mucus mobilization, if you want to we, uh, the IPP is really positive pressures and very high frequency positive pressure. This is a negative aspiration. We tried to solve uh, Caroline's problem with the mucus plugs uh, with an IPPB. And um, sometimes it works, and often it doesn't work. So um, then we started Simiox, and um, it works much better than the IPBB for her. I would, uh, I would give an answer. I would, so you can go to the table. I would give more an answer of physiologist and uh, more evidence-based medicine. It's completely two different ways to, uh, uh, to try to uh, fight against uh, mockers. Uh, IPPV, it's really positive pressure with uh, very small flows with high frequency. Uh, my opinion has always been that it's uh, a way to increase the flow uh, with a ver very comfortable, and sometimes somebody thinks that you can cut the mucus. Uh, this is different because it's going to make some uh, little aspiration without bronchus collapse. Uh, that's a new idea. Again, new idea, something seems to work. Let's try it now uh, on the tables if you want to uh, understand what is, it, what is different. So we have four uh, tables with four uh, expert physios uh, that uh, would be very happy to show you, uh, to demo you the, the device. So as I was saying, you should have been given a small piece of paper. So this refers to the, num the number of the tables. So if you want to, to join, 
the table, the number you've been given. Uh, so we have a German uh, speaking person, French uh, speaking person as well, and English, uh, of course. So uh, if there is an other questions, ah. but I know you are going to ask oh. it on at the table if you don't mind, because we uh, we want right. really want you to practice, but not really no, just, ask your question. One question. Uh, I wonder what happened to the rheology of the mucus, like viscous uh, elasticity. Have you done the, uh, measure the, visco the chain of the viscoelasticity of the mucus? So we have two papers that have been published on the research that I talked about, about the uh, um, um, physical properties and, f and, and behavior of this specific material, which is the bronchial mucus. So yes, there have been a lot of tests being done on the, on the, on the material and uh, how it behaves. And from that, we've been able to come with this signal that is specific to act on the viscosity and reduce the viscosity of the, of the mucus. Okay, thank you very much to uh, share with us that and uh, practice on the tables if you want. And uh, we can give the papers of rheology if, you, if uh, you have other questions. Now, thank you very much for this session. Let's practice. <laughs>